What's up, guys? It's your boy, Barca Boy 103. Today, we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past like few days, a week or so. I have not been able to make a news video because we've been playing every other bloody day, and we have a lot of news to talk about. Firstly, we've been linked with about nine players, ten players over the transfer window. The likes of whether Rodriguez not being an option anymore, indeed now emerging as an option in the pivot. Uh, Lo Celso does not want to join Barcelona anymore. Nico Williams is considering Real Madrid as an option. We've also been linked with the Lit, Kai Havers, Jorginho, Sancho, Martial. The list goes on and on and on. We'll talk about every single target, but also we do have some permanent players that we do want to keep, and that's Juan Cancelo and Joao Felix. We have an update on their futures. We already have an agreement with Man City for the fee of Cancelo, but with Felix, it's a bit more of a complicated situation. We have absolutely huge, and I mean huge, contract renewal update of Frankie de Jong, and it is positive. We have the set date now for Lemanya Mal's renewal. We have some injury updates on all the injured players right now. Frankie de Jong, Pedri, Rafinha, new injury from last night, and also Victor Roque. Quick updates around the boring Nigeria case. The Nike collab has come out as well with Pata. We're going to talk about that and also the design they have coming out and the merchandise as well. And finally, Barcelona's financial year has ended off with a positive in the financial section. We're going to give you guys all the updates and figures on how much Barcelona made last season in terms of revenue. Before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 200 likes this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it now before we get into this video this video is sponsored by number one foot number one foot is one of the best replica football jersey websites on the market right now they have a variety of different items at absolutely fantastic prices for me here today i'm going to show you guys the training kit from this season, this is the warm-up kit that, that the players use when they go out for training every single day, pre-games as well. You have here the Spotify logo, they have the club badge on it with the diamond as well. And I also have here one of the sweaters they have from last season. This was the Catalonia version. It feels like I bought this from the Nike store directly. The quality is absolutely unreal. The printing is fantastic. And of course, mainly the prices are unbeatable. And if you use the discount code BOY at checkout, you do get an additional 15% off your final order that is b-o-y use it at checkout you get 15 percent off your order and all orders above 80 dollars as well will guarantee you free shipping so what are you waiting for click the top link in the description down below and get your new football kits today let's start off with the transfer news over the past few days now we're first going to be discussing what barcelona's priority will be in the january transfer window and that is most likely to reinforce the pivot position now one of the main targets for barcelona for about a year now the pivot position has been Guido Rodriguez, of course, the Argentine playing right now for Real Betis, who will be a free agent this summer. But according to reports coming in from having Miguel from AES, he's come out saying that Guido Rodriguez is completely ruled out as a signing for Barcelona and also Adul Gaston who is the number one source in regards to Argentinian players moving across Europe and Argentina players in general. He's come out saying there is no negotiation whatsoever in any way shape or form between Barcelona and Betis for Guido Rodriguez. Looks like that option now is out the window now that brings up the question who will be the next option. I honestly thought that he was going to be the top target for January of course as an experienced versatile player to come and reinforce who of course will be significantly cheaper we have been linked with another pivot and this is a new name and it is Wilfred Ndidi Sport have come out saying that Wilfred Ndidi's contract over at Leicester City expires in June and Barcelona are keeping track of his situation now Ndidi a few years ago was one of the best pivots in the Premier League he's more so of a N'Golo Kante type profile on the pivot, not like a Romeo or a Busquets profile that will spray the ball. He's more so picking the ball, make driving runs into the final third. I mean, something that I'm not really too keen on. I think we're at a point, like I said, with Romeo, is where you want to invest young, whether it's, you know, Artur Vermeerlin or Gabriel Moscardo. I think we're at that point where you want to invest young and have Romeo there to kind of nurture that youngness. I think bringing in two veterans will make Barcelona suffer in the long term. I think Ndidi is a good player, but I think over the past year, he's dropped off dramatically, and this would just be Barcelona signing someone because he's free. I think, honestly, he's being linked with Barcelona because he's free. I don't think there's any concrete reports in there whatsoever, but we'll wait and see. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the uh, pivot this uh, January. Again, over Ndidi could be an option this summer, but the main target for January was Guido Rodriguez, but now that option is ruled out. Now, another Argentine midfielder who also 
also will not be joining Barcelona anytime soon. And his option is also ruled out is Giovanni Lo Celso. Now, we first got some reports coming in from the Football Insider in the UK saying that Barcelona are considering a surprise January swoop for out of favor Tottenham midfielder Giovanni Lo Celso. This is then backed up by Sport saying that Tottenham will want around 13 million euros to let Giovanni Lo Celso leave in January with Barcelona and Betis being interested. Now, when I first initially saw this, I'm thinking 13 million for Lo Celso. It's a very good deal. Again, he's 28 years old. He'll come in, have a few good years at Barcelona. I think this would be a good signing for around 10 million plus three in variables. I think that's a stellar deal, especially in January. Shortly after all these reports, I think about 24 hours afterwards, Fernando Polo from Mundo Deportivo came out saying that Lo Celso does not want to leave Tottenham in January. He wants to prove himself there, thus ruling out a move to Barcelona in January. So Lo Celso still is to confirm that he wants to prove himself at Tottenham Hotspur, of course, they have a very good midfield right now. Madison, Saar, Basuma, they got Benton Kura coming back from injury. Hoiberg, who probably will leave in January. And of course, Lo Celso is an option there. So, he's the one that's committing to Tottenham. He's the one who wants to stay there and prove himself wrong. Again, his contract is expired there in 2025, so he'd be a free agent. Not this summer, but the following summer, so maybe keep your eyes on that. But again, for now, in January, very, very, very unlikely that Lo Celso will make a move to Barcelona. We have been linked with the midfielder as well with that creative profile and that is of course Florian Verts with Catalonia Radio saying that Barcelona are interested in signing Florian Verts. Of course we've always been interested not really nothing new there to be honest but again very very good player doing very very well with Bayern Leverkusen right now under Chabi Alonso. Keep our eyes on him for the future. I think this summer he'll be available probably for around 80 million euros. Again, I think Barcelona should be spending that money elsewhere. But if he becomes a free agent in the future, definitely one to watch out for. He's been known as a Barcelona fan since he's grown up. But I think Barcelona in this situation would probably favor someone like Denny Almo, maybe Alex Benia over Florian Verts, although he is an absolute gem of a talent so we'll wait and see keep your eyes on him but for now the interest of course has always been there and again Giovanni Lo Celso to Barcelona at least for the upcoming January transfer window is ruled out now on the topic of free agents one of the main free agent targets for Barcelona this summer is of course Nico Williams right now his priority is to stay at Athletic Club but if he does not renew his contract with Athletic Club he will be available on a free now sport have come out saying that Real Madrid believes that Nico Williams would prefer to move to them rather than to Barcelona if he does decide to leave Bilbao now this is very very interesting again with Real Madrid they already have their winger set in stone Rodrigo and Vinicius can Nico Williams really break through that I'm not quite too sure if of course Mbappe keep in mind is going to be a free agent I think most likely he will join Real Madrid this upcoming summer if he joins Will he get any game time? At least at Barcelona, there's always a chance. Rafinha, Ilaven Yamal, Fran Torres, Joao Felix, and himself. Joao Felix's future, again, he's on loan, still unclear. Fran Torres, if Nico Williams joins, I think that'll make his future unclear. So, definitely, you know, somewhere where he can compete. Where Real Madrid, I think, is pretty much set in stone. It'll be bar a miracle or injuries. Will he break and be a permanent starting Leonard player? So, wait and see with, uh, with Nico Williams. Keep her eyes on it. Once he decides his future, whether he wants to renew with Bill Bow. Or lead. That's when we'll get more concrete reports. But for now, his future remains in the air with him currently negotiating a renewal with Bill Bow. Again, terms and conditions are not agreed quite yet. And if they're not agreed, he will be available on a free. Now, staying on the topic still with free agents, we have been linked with another top free agent, and that is Juan Miranda. Of course, a former Barcelona player who we did sell, I believe, in 2020. If I'm not mistaken, to Betis. Now, Sport have come out saying that Juan Miranda's contract at Betis expires in 2024, and Barcelona could try and sign him if he decides to leave on a free. He fits the bill and would be uh, Baldi's backup if he renews. Barcelona will continue to maintain a 50%, of course, of any future sale for the player. Now, that's going to be a good option. Of course, we do have Alex Valle currently on loan with uh, Levante. Honestly, I'd take either one. If you want to um, sign Miranda on a free, have him compete with Balde, then maybe sell Vai or keep loaning him out, that's an option. Or pass up on Miranda and just trust Alex Vai and don't spend any money, essentially. I'm good with either option. I think, again, Juan Miranda has done very well with Betis since leaving Barcelona. But again, would he want to be a starter? Is he okay with competing with Balde and providing coverage and competition? 
I think it dep depends on the player's ambition. Also, what's he, what's he gonna ask for in terms of wages as a free agent? If he's asking for more than I'd say seventy thousand a week, I wouldn't budge. I think Alex Valle would probably be on like what two thousand a week, maybe even less. So again, comes down to if buts and maybe if the figures are in place. And also, if Miranda himself will leave Betis for free and if he wants to move as well. So keep your eyes on it. Again, he will be a free agent. Barcelona are you know interested in having him come in as you know coverage and competition for Alejandro Balde. But again, nothing developed quite yet. Just an idea. Now, according to Mundo Deportivo, there is a list of players who Barcelona are keeping an eye on the situation in case there are things developing in the next few months. And this list is very, very interesting. Now, of course, Nico Williams already talked about him, so we'll skip him. There's also Jaden Sancho. Again, we talked about him on the channel a few videos ago. Go check that out. Matthias Delit, Jorginho, uh, Anthony Martial, and Kai Havertz. Now, if, if I'm being honest, the only players I would take on this list are Nico Williams and DeLitt. DeLitt, oh, he's a brilliant center back. I was desperate, desperate for him in 2019. I think that was the most desperate I ever wanted a player to sign for Barcelona. We just don't, I don't think he would come into the situation. Again, Inigo Martinez, Christensen, Kunde, Aruha. If he comes in, he's third or fourth choice center back. Although he would be absolutely brilliant to have on the bench and debutated and coming in. Of course, Aruha was on one leg. He's injured every other month. What would that say for Christensen? I think if Delit was to come in, we would have to sell Christensen because I don't think Christensen would be happy with being fourth choice center back. I think right now on current form over the past year and a half, Christensen has been better than Delit. But I think Delit has the better ceiling. I think he's better... Um, has more promise to his game in their prime. I think the lit again not doing too well at Bayern Munich in the sense that he's not getting picked right now. It's Upamecano and um, who's their other center back? Kim Min Jae. Other two right now getting selected. So we'll wait and see with that. Again, Jay Sancho dead. Don't want him. Jorginho wash. Don't want him. Martial don't need him. We have Victor Roque unless you want to bring in Martial to be back up with Victor Roque. But again, Martial is injured every other day. I mean, I have many United friends who say that oh he's warming up. He'll be out for two weeks. Come back from two weeks. Warming up, gets injured. No thanks. And of course, Kai Havertz, <laughs> enough said there. So, we'll wait and see. Again, Barcelona in a situation now financially where they're keeping an eye on top players' uh, situations to see if they can get them for free or a very cut price. Again, I like this list. I think it's a good, you know, list to start off with. But I think that Nico Williams and DeLitt are the only two players that actually stand a chance. Now, we do have some updates in regards to current Barcelona players and their future at Barcelona as well. Firstly, Victor Oroque, who of course we did buy in the summer on an official deal pending of course happening in January he's also injured we do have an injury update on Victor Roque later on in the video but Joaquin Pereira from sports has come out saying that Barcelona have informed Victor Roque that there will be no problem in his registration in January his next game is expected to be in a Barcelona shirt of course he is injured I don't know how Barcelona are going to finagle this, but they're promising Victor Roque. Deco's coming out saying we'll have no problems. Deco's telling Xavi there won't be any issues. I don't know if Barcelona are going to sell someone. I don't know if they're going to renew a player. Frankie De Jong will talk about him. I don't know if we're going to you know, activate some economic lever. But as of right now, in the current state of the wage bill, we can't bring Victor Roque in. Something has to happen. So, looks like Barcelona are planning for that to happen. They know that will happen. We'll wait and see what happens. But again, Victor Roque is expected to join Barcelona in January. Again, that would be a massive, massive booth. We see Lewandowski now struggling. Fran Torres plays at the number nine, not up to scratch. Imagine Victor Roque. Holy moly, we could get really serious come end of January, beginning of February and onwards. So we'll wait and see on Victor Roque, but again, Barcelona, Victor Roque, his agents, Xavi, everyone expects that the Brazilian will arrive in January. Now we do have some reports on current Barcelona players staying on a long-term basis. And of course, I am talking about the two Joao's, Joao Felix and Joao Cancelo. Now Mateo Morito from Relivo have come out saying, now Mateo Morito from Relivo has come out saying that Joao Cancelo and Joao Felix both want to stay at Barcelona beyond the season. But as of today, there are no negotiations whatsoever with either Atletico Madrid or Manchester City. Barcelona will think about it in due time so again Barcelona want to see how things are going uh, you know middle season end of season time again right now off to a flying start both starting players for Barcelona both integral to the system style of play and outcomes now Deco just speak about uh, Felix and uh, Cancelo I believe this was before the Mallorca match or maybe before Celta Vigo he came out saying look on Felix and Cancelo the decision is not only mine the coach also has the final say on the signings also the technical and sports administration it's too early to talk about it little by little we're thinking about the future at the moment we are happy with both of them. I'm enjoying both of them. We are happy with all the signings. All of them continue to do important things 
to the team. So again, he's basically saying that Barcelona, not thinking about it right now, but again, it's everyone who decides, not just me, as with the view of Xavi, the sport administration as well, and also the president you probably could expect as well. So again, nothing starting off right now, but we do have some snippets of ideas here and there on what will happen in terms of the deal. Now with Atletico Madrid, Joel Felix, apparently Atletico Madrid will be open to a swap deal. We'll wait and see what Barcelona proposed in that sense. I think 80 million up front for Joel Felix is a bit ex uh, expensive, even for what he's doing right now. If he only excels from, from now, then maybe, but if he stays at this pace, I think 80 million for right now for Felix is a bit too much. Now, the Athletic Committee president has come out speaking about uh, Joao Felix's current situation at uh, Barcelona. He was asked about it, and he said Vinicius, first of all. So, again, he's a bit old, so... Well, it comes in slack. He is referring to Joao Felix, saying that he's a fantastic player. He's proving a lot at Barcelona. He didn't adapt well to us. He wasn't ready, but remember that he is an Athletic Madrid player. So that's him, you know, saying that we are the ace side. We have the up hand on what happens with his future, and we decide everything. Again, keep in mind, Felix did renew his contract for two additional years to leave Atletico Madrid to enjoy Barcelona on loan. So that one will be the most difficult situation, and again, I don't think it'll be easy. But with Cancelo, it is much easier easier as Fernando Polo from Deportivo is reporting that people close to Juan Cancelo say he can leave Man City for around 25 million euros plus some variables as well so again we're expecting maybe a 30 million 35 million euro package for Cancelo worth every penny I think after this season Cancelo could probably give you two three years at the top level at both right back and left back easy bargain for me I mean you're getting one of the best fullbacks in the world on 30 million ridiculously cheap so i'd definitely go for that again we already had that preliminary agreement with man city so we couldn't include the actual buy option in the loan due to ffp and all that crap so we'll wait and see on the future of the joao's i think i think 100 percent one of them will be staying for at barcelona long term the question is will both of them be staying long term Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. We have some monumental updates. Firstly, on Lamen Yamal. Again, this renewal was already agreed back at the beginning of July. But finally, we have a date set for his contract to be signed. Raccoon have come out saying that Barcelona are working to have Lamen Yamal's contract renewal ceremony to happen on October 2nd. Renewal until 2026, of course, with a 1 billion euro release clause is already sealed. Tony Juan Marti came out confirming it, saying that the Manny Miles contract renewal ceremony will be held on Monday, October 2nd, new contract in 2026, with the 1 billion euro release clause. This will be the day before Barcelona travel to Portugal to face Porto in the Champions League. And finally, Fernando Polo of Monoportivo came out saying that La Manny Mal will sign his renewal until 2026 on Monday. However, under youth player protocols, a public event won't be organized. The signing will be done in private, with only those responsible for the sports area being present. Excellent, excellent move by Barcelona. They were thinking about having a whole entire ceremony like they did with Balde and Pedri and Arujo and Ansu and all that. I think that's too much on Lamen Yamal. He's still a kid, 16 years old. When I was 16 years old, I was watching Barcelona win the treble. So yeah, you got to take it a bit easy here and there. Again, nice little pictures in the office, sign the contract, that's it. I don't even think he'll hold up a shirt until I will say, you know, yeah, Lamen Yamal 2026 like Balde did when he had Balde. 2028. I don't even think he'll do that. Just go like Chavez renewal. Very simple. Release the picture, sign some stuff. Bish bash bosh, you're all good. And this will be taking place on Monday. So finally, 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 official confirmation for the Manny Miles renewal coming very soon. The next and final contract renewal update is on the contract renewal of Frankie de Jong. And here is where the monumental updates are coming in. Barcelona are progressing in talks for de Jong's renewal. Of course, we started talks about a few weeks ago, and now they're at the next phase which is negotiations. Fernando Polo from Deportivo came out saying that Deco has held first contacts with Frankie de Jong regarding a renewal and it ended with positive feelings. Frankie de Jong is open to renewing and the plans for him to sign until 2028. So again, very similar to the plan with Mark Arthur Ter Stegen. His current contract Frankie de Jong ends in 2026, renew it for two years and also space out his salary for those uh, extra additional two years, there won't be a salary increase or decrease They're in the same amount of money from now until 2026. We're just gonna extend that until 2027. Sport also confirmed this, saying that Deco has held initial contacts to extend Frankie Dion's contract until 2028, and the harmony between the parties is good. Deco has informed Young that both him and Xavi consider him as a cornerstone of the current project. De Jong made it clear that he's very comfortable in the club and the city and his wish is only to contribute and his wish is only to continue. At Barcelona, Deco's idea is to make progress in negotiations in the coming months and he would like to be able to close the renewal by January. Oh, the stars are aligning. Victor Roque wants to come in January. We need a renewal or a sale. 
It's the stars are lining up last and I've been saying this for weeks now. Start the talks now. He's injured before he has his kid as well. Once he has his kid, he's going to be too occupied to discuss and he's going to be focused on playing and raising a kid. Get the talks now. Put out the basis now and then come December during the Christmas break. Intensify those talks. Get it signed. Get it registered by January the 1st. Then Victor Roque comes in. This will be a brilliant operation. Again, Frankie De Jong is currently on form despite being injured. The best midfielder in the world. Keeping him is absolutely imperative and again if it was it was if it was Matteo Aleman here maybe it'd be a bit more difficult but with Deco hopefully this will come to fruition so wait and see what happens over the next few weeks but again Barcelona and Frankie de Jong have held initial talks over a contract renewal which have been very very positive Let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past few days. Just one player, and it is the main man, RL9, Robert Lewandowski. Now, Sport have come out today that Saudi Arabia will continue to push for Lewandowski in the upcoming transfer windows in January and in the summer. And that brings up the question is, if would Barcelona sell him? I think right now, on current form, the club might consider it, especially... If a good offer comes in, we had some Saudi Arabia player for a team saying that, oh, we hope we can get Lewandowski. He would, you know, uh, level up this team and blah, blah, blah. If we get like a bid, 80 million plus, I take it. I really would. I think you make, you make, of course, double your profit. We bought him for 40. You make double. You have that money at hand. You can hopefully spend it on the current squad. I think Lewandowski is at a point where next season, will probably be his last season at the top level and after that he will deteriorate which will you know take a backup role to Victor Roque or will Barcelona just cut their ties this summer Barcelona do have I think an exit clause next summer with Lewandowski not this summer 2024 but 2025 so this would be the time to sell would be this summer so very very interesting to see again it depends on how the season goes right now I think if he gets at 20 goals 10 assists 30 goals uh, contribution in total I think he will be fine but if he gets less than that you know one way to see again yesterday against the Villa Build up play connection was all good just in the box what the striker needs to do score goals wasn't really there in those positions at the time So we see Lewandowski again depends on the offer and the bids But Saudi Arabia might come calling for Lua again Let's now discuss some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past few days First we're gonna discuss two veteran players who are pleasing Xavi a lot behind the scenes But haven't been getting too many minutes recently and that is Sergio Roberto and Marcos Alonso who are both available on our free this summer and Barcelona have not discussed any renewal talks with them whatsoever. Now, firstly on Roberto, Jordi Hill from Sport has come out saying that Roberto's attitude despite not having many minutes has been exemplary. He's acting like a true captain and Xavi has taken notice. He plans to give him minutes in the coming games. Of course, he did warm up yesterday against Sevilla but didn't make it on the pitch. Look, Roberto, I think he's at a point now where this is going to be his last season. I think he should announce it around February that, yep, I'm going to leave in the summer for free. Call it quits. I mean... He put in the worst performance I've seen from him this season. Villarreal away. I gave him a bloody 1 out of 10 in my match review. I don't think I've given a 1 to anyone. That's how shockingly bad he was. I mean, I could not comprehend the fact that he was a Barcelona player playing it right back. I think he could put a shift in, in the Copa del Rey maybe. Again, like a decent uh, lower opposition team at home if we need rotation. But again, he's not at the level, and I think hopefully this will be his last season. And as the captain behind the scenes, you know, working hard, training well, uh, knows the city. I think he's, I think he's definitely a good captain. But I think on the pitch is where that uh, gap comes in. But we'll see what happens with Roberto. I think most likely this will be his last season, and hopefully alongside with Marcus Alonso. Now, Sport have come out saying that despite playing very less, Marcus Alonso is one of the leaders. In the dressing room, it has earned the respect of his teammates. The youngsters see him as an example. Chavi is very satisfied with his attitude and work. When he speaks, he is heard. If Alonso is the captain in the dressing room, my goodness gracious, are we on a downfall? <laughs> I mean, Mark, we went from, you know, Busquets, PK, Messi, Iniesta, Chavi, Jordi Alba even, to bloody Marcus Alonso. He's been here for a year and a bit, a year and a month. And he's a leader. He's one of the top dogs in the dressing room. I mean, if, how he finagled that, fair enough. I think, again, Alonso's same situation with Roberto. Should leave it this summer. Not a legend, of course, whatsoever. His time is up. Yes, he can put a shift in here and there. But I think he played one game. What was that game where we played? Um, oh, I forget. Was it Betis where he started? There's his home game where he started. He was, you know, I I think even against Villarreal away, he wasn't. He was pretty mid. He wasn't Roberto bad. But again, 
not the level of Barcelona. I'd much rather have Juan Miranda over him. I'd much rather have Alex Valle over him as well. I think both of them are at a higher level than Marcos Alonso. So I'll wait and see on these two players. Again, the Chavi is very happy with both of them. They're both very happy with their situation despite not getting any minutes. But again, both up for free this summer, and I expect both of them will leave for free this summer. Now, some more interesting news around Barcelona, and it is in regards to our current low knee, who's out on loan in Ansu Fati at Brighton. He's been playing well, but not getting any goals or assists officially. And Alfredo Martinez came out saying that Xavi and the coaching staff did not see the expected evolution of Ansu Fati. According to them, he didn't progress and was stagnated. This was key for the player to leave on loan. So Xavi and his coaching staff didn't see any development from Ansu Fati from the moment they joined until he went out on loan. And I think that's a fair assumption. I think, again, mostly that's the reason re The reason behind that is he's in and out of the team. He's always suffered an absolutely probably top three or worst injuries you can suffer in football. And I think he didn't need this loan. I understand that. I still would have uh, preferred to keep him. But nonetheless, he's gone on loan. I hope he does well at Brighton. Again, he's played, I think, four or five games now. No goals, no assists, or maybe three games. And he played United away, then a Europa League game, then another Prem game. Then uh, midweek Carabao Cup. He's played about four games now for Brighton. No goals, no assists either. But he's playing well. He's getting into good areas. I've seen some of his clips. He's 1v1 with Robert Sanchez against Chelsea. And he puts it wide. I mean, it's the Ansu I've seen recently. And again, the coaching staff really want to see some progression this season. And we'll have to wait and see if Ansu Fati does that. I get his future very much in the year right now. Joao Felix is performing. Fran Torres is doing well off the bench. So Ansu Fati does have some big pressure to perform. Or else, by the end of next summer, he might not be a Barcelona player. Let's now discuss some of the injury updates around the first team at Barcelona. We do have updates on four key player injuries. We're going to go through them all. I'll give you guys the updates and my opinion. I will keep this all in one section just to save myself from editing and also just run through it very, very quickly. Firstly, on Pedri. Having Miguel from AS came out saying the plan is that Pedri plays a few minutes versus Athletic Club on October 22nd and gains rhythm ahead of the Clasico on the 28th. His rehabilitation will be intensified during the international break so that he can return at 100% when the club games resume so again Pedri should be back after the international break and hopefully will be fit enough to start in the Classico next injury update is on Rafinha who went down of course last night with a hamstring injury against Sevilla I told you guys in the live stream he's definitely going to be out for a month and of course Barca boy correct yet again having Miguel from AS came out saying that first test indicates that Rafinha will be out for at least one month with a torn hamstring. Tony Juan Marti also confirmed that Rafinha will probably be out for at least a month or at least until the international break. In principle, he should be available for the Classico on the 28th. As of recording this video, we'll probably get more updates on Rafinha, but as I'm recording this video, no further updates have come out. Again, I expect the Rafinha to be out for at least a month. If he comes back after international break, that is a positive. So you'll miss uh, Porto away, Granada away, Athletic Club probably when we come back with the national break. I think he could be on the bench for the Classico. I don't know if he'll be match fit or not, but I think by the end of October, he definitely should be back to fully match fitness. And again, tough start to the season for him. You know, he's been banned for three games. He's now going to miss three games through injury. Tough start for Rafa, but again, I think he has been playing well this season when he has been given the minutes. Again, out for a month. He should be back maybe after international break if things go very, very well. Next up is the next Brazilian, and that is, of course, Victor Roque. Joaquin Pereira from Sport has come out saying that even if Victor Roque receives a medical green light before the season ends in Brazil in December, he does not want to rush anything. His priority is to arrive to Barcelona totally fit in January, and his every move is conditioned by this. The ideal situation right now for Victor Roque is for him to be 1,000% ready by January the 1st. He joins, starts training, trains probably for a week or two, I would say, without play. Maybe he can include him in the Copa del Rey squad list during that time. But again, if he's 100% green light fit by January the 1st, I think we're cooking. If he does not get that green light until then, maybe he gets it afterwards, I think he'll be integrated very, very slowly into Barcelona. But nonetheless, in the new year, we should hopefully have a new Brazilian striker in the club and last but not the least is of course the injury to Frankie de Jong of course last night at the game Frankie de Jong was in attendance he was coming in on crutches he had a big cast on his right ankle as well can this year have come out saying that Frankie de Jong's injury is rare because it occurs due to strong trauma that was with Jonathan Bamba falling on him it is a ligament that joins the tibia and the fibula to the ankles and doctors say it is very delicate. Esper Consola speak of a minimum of six weeks out and it fits with the diagnosis made by the Barcelona doctors. Today, De Jong was at the Ciudad Esportiva on crutches and with an opathetic boot as well, which of course we saw yesterday in the match against Sevilla. Having Miguel from AS came out saying that Frankie De 
Alex practically ruled out for the El Clasico on October 28th. Only a miracle can change things, but no risk will be taken in any case, and he won't be rushed back. He is expected back against Shakhtar Donetsk in the Champions League on November 7th. Honestly, I think Frankie Young will be back around mid to end of November, November. I think he'll probably be on the pitch by beginning of January. He'll start training, start training. Don't want to risk him whatsoever. I don't think we'll see Frankie De Jong until November 15th-ish, 16th, maybe even 20, somewhere around there. Again, you don't want to rush him back. He's so, so crucial to this team. A relapse would absolutely kill our season, so we have to be super extra cautious with Frankie De Jong's injury. Now for a more brighter subject where Barcelona's Nike and Pacta collab has been made official by Barcelona. They released a little video with the heart and stuff saying collab coming soon, and we do have some more leaks on the merchandise. And we do have some more leaks on the merchandise being released. Barcelona Pacta Culés de Moon collection will be available online on Friday, October 13th, and in Pacta's chapter stores in Amsterdam, London, and Milan. So this collab will be coming out on October 13th. You can see there the specific kits that are going to be coming out. I think again the kit looks absolutely shite, but again it goes with the Pacta branding. I like how the badge in the middle, but apart from that, I think the uh, design is pretty boring and we do have some more merch coming out so we're gonna have the two shirts of course one fan one official you're gonna have the shoes that's the one i'm looking forward to the most you're gonna have a couple sweaters t-shirts jacket shorts uh and a hat as well to be honest if that jacket looks i think the design on the jacket looks better on the shirt i might pick up that the sweater looks nice too i think 100 percent i'm getting those shoes nike air force barcelona shoes definitely getting those I think I might definitely get the kit as well. Then on top of that, we'll wait and see. Again, depends on the pricing. We are getting, we are hearing the kit will be only $75, which again is about, about $30 less than the official Barcelona kit for like the first team, like the official uh, our official shirts, which isn't bad. So if they're a relatively decent price, I might pick up a couple. But if it's very expensive, I think worst case, best case scenario, you could say I'll get the shirt and the shoes. The shoes are what I really want. And those, when those shoes got leaked a few months ago, I was like, damn, get that in my beat right now so again the collab has now been confirmed and it will be released on october 13th during the international break now on to more serious topics in the barcelona boardroom where again the negative case is popping out in the media over the past few days we saw yesterday that sevilla's uh executives wouldn't sit in the barcelona boss because of the issue they released a statement barcelona released a statement back Support came out saying that Barcelona is not concerned about the new bribery charges that have come out regarding the Negueira case. Barcelona know they have never purged referees or influenced decisions that benefit the club in any way. Again, it is all crap. Barcelona's back on top. Let's shit on them. Even Ancelotti is coming out saying, oh, I'm worried. Savi is coming out saying, oh, I'm worried. Javier Tevez saying, oh, this is a very scary situation. Nothing happened. We paid the vice president of the referees committee in 2009 to conduct analysis on the referees, why they give red cars, if they give yellow cars for a standing slide tackle, if I elbow someone going for a header, will I get a yellow or a red? They're analyzing the referee, and that's what a good club does. You analyze players, why not referees who also have a very big impact on the match. No problem whatsoever, we spent seven million or eight million, I think, over the course of, what, 11, 12 years, and people think we bribe the referees. It's all crap, lads. Once this dies down, Laporta's got this, my president, no worries whatsoever. But again, the Gator case is popping out here and there. Don't read into it too much. I think the I think what will actually happen is that Barcelona might pay a fine, of like a million fine to the uh, the federation, and that's it. I doubt Barcelona are not going to get relegated to the second division. I've seen some of those reports. We're not going to be fined and banned for the transfer window. No, that's going to happen. We'll, probably, we'll get maybe a slap on the wrist like this, just to ease everyone. Oh, the Madrid media is happy because it's confirmed that Barcelona have been fined, and Barcelona we only get only have to pay like a million, and then this whole thing dies down. So. Wait and see what happens, but again, the Gary case is popping out again, but don't worry, Joan Laporte has got this. Now, the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is we do have some official news coming in from Barcelona in regards to the accounts of the 2022-2023 season, where Barcelona have released all the numbers. We're going to go through it, and we do have some profits coming in at Barcelona. So, Barcelona have released that Barcelona closed the 2022-2023 financial year with a record net profit of 304 million euros after taxes, a result higher than was approved in last season's budget. This result has been achieved in a season that will go down in history for a record operational figures that have been recorded in the commercial and operation of the facilities. The club has improved in all lines of business, recording figures higher than planned in each of them. I think Barcelona predicted that we would make around 200 profit and we have made 
300 in total. Regarding the budget for the 23-24 season, Barcelona projected their income will be around 859 million euros. The projected profit will be around 11 million euros. Now, people are probably thinking 11 million euro profit for Barcelona. That's nothing. Again, keep in mind, we are still recovering from COVID. And also, I think Madrid's profit last season was only 11.8 million euros so we are on course with the top teams in the world Barcelona's net debt has been reduced for the second second season going down from a 680 million as of January 2021 to 552 as of January 2023 so we've now reduced our debt by over a hundred million euros as well also, BLM, Barcelona's licensing and merchandising, recorded a 54% increase in sales in physical stores in 23-24 compared to the previous year. Regarding e-commercial, the growth has been 47% with special growth in the women's clothing, where the sales have grown by 275%. So my money is going to use, <laughs> I'll, say, I'll tell you that much. And also, I think one of the biggest news, and I think most, the most historic news about the budget has been the Spotify cap now generating 121 million euros in the 22-23 season. For the first time in the club's history, more than a million tickets were sold for the men's first team matches. You know how crazy that is? Keep in mind, we won Champions League, we had the best player who's ever touched a football, and only last season, We've sold more than a million tickets for the first time in the club's history. Record turnover was also seen for Barcelona Feminine matches, i.e. 2.7 million euros, which is great. And in basketball as well, 4.5 million euros. And the Barcelona Museum had a turnover of 39.9 million euros. So look, look people still doubt Juan Laporta. I told you guys, the only worst thing that he's done was renew Alonso. Everything else has been pinpoint perfection. We are up in profits, we're making money, everything is going up, whether we're sales in the store, museums, first team match tickets, the Feminite team, the basketball team, we're on the rise, and this is why they bring up the Nagata stuff, because they see these numbers, they're thinking, damn, Barcelona might be back, so, in Laporta we trust, he's done an absolute, he should be given a statue, also the cap now, for what he's done since he came in in 2021, until now, in two years, he's absolutely changed the face of this team, of this club, of this city, and we can only thank him for it. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past few days. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing first, of course, is your thoughts on the transfer targets in the pit position. No more Guido Rodriguez. Would you consider Ndidi? Who else would you go for? Muscardo, Vermeerim. Second, your thoughts on all the free agents and other players that we've been linked with, the likes of Nico Williams, Giovanni Lo Celso, DeLitt, and that other boring list as well that had absolutely irrelevant players. Next up, what are your thoughts on the Joao Cancelo and Joao Felix Permanent Transfer? Do you think one of them will join on a permanent transfer? Neither of them or both of them. And finally, your thoughts on the injury updates in regards to Pedri, Victor Roque, Frankie de Jong, and also Rafinha as well. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca. Forza Barca.